Welcome back to the dumbest modeling channel on all of YouTube, <coughs> Pitstain Hobbies. I'm your host, Ian, and we are back on the amazing Agora Models Mitsubishi A6M Zero Fighter. Link in the description below to go check out the model kit on their website. They got a lot of other cool stuff, too. And um, when I say dumbest, stupidest, idiotic about the chat, yeah, I just recorded a whole three-minute intro there with my hands waving and everything, and uh, my, my little Rode wireless mic was not working. Um, yeah, and I'm an IT guy. Unplug it and plug it back in. Oh, now it works. Jeez. This is why we do sound checks, people. Okay, so uh, that'll be in the blooper reel, probably. We've already sliced open the bag, uh, starting up here on uh, stage six, and we slice open a little baggie. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, comment, play along um, down there. Uh, play nicely, of course. And we're building more of these beautiful little air-cooled engine cylinders. Focus, yes, son of a, there we go. And we've got another one that we have not yet glued together <laughs> because our mic is now working. Um, now, some of the componentry on this motor, um, it's very similar to any radial aircraft engine, uh, like a Pratt & Whitney, uh, you know, wa double wasp or something. But I don't have an actual engine schematic on the internet I could find for the sake engine. If I'm pronouncing the name wrong, I'm sorry. That's how it's spelled, and I'm from New York. We're very simple people. Uh, but like things like, like this, I this I think is the intake manifold uh, for the supercharger and carburetor to get her into the cylinders. These things look like you know push rods to me. Obviously, we got the little the little rocker covers um, for the overhead valves. There's oil tubes and other things like that. I, I'm, I'm not going to get everything right. If someone has that diagram, though, please email it to me. Email in the description below. I'd love to see a sake engine diagram with all the little call-outs or, or an exploded, or whatever you, whatever you can find, people. There's got to be an airplane nut in here that has a diagram of a sake World War II radial engine. It doesn't matter if it's a 12, a 21, a 31. They're all close enough. Uh, the nomenclature, nom, nomenclature, nomenclature is all the same. That being said, um, we're going to break out our crazy glue. And these little cylinders, they're very simple. You just put a little glue on the pins there. Just a dab will do you. And a dabby dabby. A dabby dabby do. Up. Butter fingers. Butter's gotten expensive. I'm margarine fingers. I can't afford butter fingers anymore. Uh, these little wingy things that go on top of the cylinders. I'm not sure if they're to cover the spark plug or something. Um, I'm assuming this thing had like probably a points ignition system. So these are probably like, maybe these are spark plug wires, um, and spark plugs. There might be 14 of them. I don't know. Again, I would love to know these things. I'd love to have a, a, a diagram of the real, the real deal from the real world. Uh, these little, these little valve cover, um, these little rocker, I think the rocker covers would be the proper term. I'm assuming, um, some of them are not like the others. So with the pointy thing facing forward, you want the rocker cover. You want the little holes, these little holes, you want these facing out because that's important. There will be little crossover tubes. Um, I'm assuming oil passage tubes, I guess, that go from, from rocker to rocker. Uh, from valve cover, valve cover, whatever you want to call it. Um, like I said, I, I wish I had a diagram of the motor because I like to sound a little less idiotic when I'm working on a subject matter that I'm not really um, a certified expert on. I'm not a certified expert on tanks, but I know enough about tanks. Like, I could call out tank parts all day. And I still have um, this one fellow in the comments that's always correcting me. And I appreciate it. I like to learn. So I always like to learn from people that know more than me. That's how you get smarter is by learning from others. So the little, little crazy glue and that little cover just glues right on there like that. That's what you're looking for. We can do another view if you want, I think. I'm not, I'm not like the big, the big fancy YouTubers, but yeah, there we go. Okay, so... I'm going to build this other cylinder up, and then uh, after this, I think it's probably about five more cylinder, three, yeah, three more cylinders after this we're going to have to build, and then we should have all of our cylinders. So that should be fun. We'll be right back. Oh, we'll be right back. 
All right, so once our little cylinders are done here, um, we're gonna put them in there and they have a little letter up, come on. They have a little letter A on these and there's a little letter A right here. And then there's another little letter A right here. Now we're putting these in here and we're like gingerly putting it down and we're gonna take it all apart <laughs> in one of the following stages because we gotta put all those little uh, crossover tubes between each cylinder. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's it for stage six. Stage seven, more of the same. We're going to grab our, grab more of our bits. Oh, we got, yeah, we got a pair of tweezers in here. Luckily, we already had a pair of tweezers available because those do come in handy. Let's see what we got here. So we got two more cylinders and some more rocker slash valve covers and uh, those little, those little oil pipes or something that we've, we've been putting onto the first half of the motor, which we got to take this whole thing apart too in a future step to get oil crossover tubes, which is what I'm calling them. Again, someone send a diagram and correct me, please. I'm floundering over here. And I know what a radial engine is. It's very cool, actually. It's, it's, it's a totally, totally weird system if you're just used to like your standard car type engines. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, they're, they're, they're pretty damn cool. They were pretty ingenious, really. Um, get a lot of cylinders into a fairly compact area. So you get a nice stubby motor front to back. It's a little girthy, of course, but no one ever complained about a little extra girth um, on their motor. Um, there we go. Two of these, and these say B. Oh, we got to put our little valve covers on. We'll get those little covers glued on. We're going to drop it in there. We're going to grab uh, the next parts pack, and we'll be right back. All right, just like that, we're on stage eight. And we got one more cylinder in here to slap together. And then we have the other half of the plate that holds all the cylinders together. Little valve covers, we got a couple screws here. And then, there we go. And we'll just, all right, here you go. Okay, goodbye. Uh, there's our cylinder. And then we got all these, these little crossover tubes we were talking about. These are eensy weensy little things. I mean, tweezers, magnifiers, and crazy glue are, your, are going to be your friend here. And this could get a bit fiddly, but if you take your time, if I can do it, you can, if you, if Ian can cook, so can you, um, so to speak. Uh, it's, it's not all that hard. It's just um, detail oriented, but I love putting together all these little cylinders. These are crazy. This is going to be so sick. Like, it really makes you want to, like, weather it up or something. And, like, I don't know. I might go for a museum piece. I think I'm going to... I think by the time I'm done building the engine, I'm not going to want to dirty it up with stuff. I'm going to want to see every little detail nice and clear, I think. But I may just use a little something maybe on the exhaust manifolds. We'll see. I'll be right back with um, uh, the next... I guess the next stage is not much else to do here except glue on these little rocker covers. And I'm going to keep teetering between rocker cover and valve cover. And, uh, well, let me just, let me just grab nine while we're here. Here's stage nine. There we go. And what do we have here? Is we have, uh, some sort of little frame for the motor. Got more of these little, uh, spark plug covers, I guess, maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll find out more because I think those are the spark plugs, those little bendy wires. And then we got like the tip of the motor. This is like, I guess the output gear or the output differential, whatever is at the front of the radial engine that the propeller connects into. There's got to be some sort of, in real life, some sort of, you know, uh, worm gear or planetary gear system in there, I feel. Um, but again, I need that diagram. Somebody dig it up, please. That's your mission. All the viewers, dig up a sake engine diagram for me. Oh, that'd be so cool. All right, we'll be right back. So here's where things can get <clears throat> detail-oriented. <clears throat> we're going to take one of the cylinders, and we're going to take one of these little tiny crossover tubes we've snipped off, and we've got to glue it onto here. And then wait for it to dry enough. And we're going to do that on this side, on each cylinder, all the way around 
the motor until we get to the to the end, and then they'll all connect. So um, we're gonna do one at a time. We're gonna do each of these, and then we're gonna I think put the glue on the other side, and and then reassemble it into a circle. This should be fun. I will be back in about six hours. So <clears throat> I gave up. <laughs> I try not to use this on pre-painted things as much as possible. I tested it on one cylinder. It did not harm the paint. Um, so I'm going to recommend using a CA accelerator of some form. Now, we've got all these pipes on these seven cylinders here. There we are. And we've got an A cylinder. So we're going to put that into one of the A's here. A. And then we're going to take a B cylinder, and we're just going to we're just going to line her up, and she lines up pretty well. You may need to play with the pokey bit a little bit, and then we go with another A cylinder, and we're just going to go around the motor, reinserting these. And then what we're going to do is just, just tweak those lines a little bit. It's important to get them in at a good angle. So you want them to be nice and parallel, and you want it to actually stick up a bit. You don't want it to be straight down from that hole, just, just to cant off like five degrees or so. And then this is a, that's an A. We need a B. Let's put a B in the B slot and get that little pipe in there. There's not a lot of resistance, and this is this is a bit fiddly here, okay? So I've done a few of them on camera already, and then what we're gonna do is once we have this thing together, we're gonna we're gonna bolt the, the retainer plate on here, and then we're just gonna tweak all those pipes into place, dab a CA, little zip kicker, and we'll be done. I, I Honestly, I was warned this would be really, 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 really uh, a, a, a trying pack of parts. But so far, it's just a little, it's just tedious. It's just a little fiddly. You just, you know, not too bad. We will return shortly. Well, that was a little fiddly, and it was not six hours. <laughs> so we got all of our little oil crossover tubes in. Then we dismantled <laughs> and did all the oil crossover tubes in the first half of the engine we built uh, in a previous uh, in uh, pack one. And now for uh, the more stage nine parts, we're going to take all these little guys. We're going to snip these off the sprue. Let's see if they're all identical first. They're all identical. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to snip all these off. And basically what we're going to do, again, try to use your good if you got good single-bladed nippers, this is the time to break them out. Uh, these are finely detailed pieces of plastic. This is what these are meant for. And these little guys go right on the top of each cylinder head. There's a big hole and a small hole. Oh, okay. So these go... These go this way. I had it backwards. Hold on. Let me just push her in there first. This, you definitely, if you're, um, there we go. You're gonna, uh, come on. You're going to push it right in there. See, so big hole, small hole. It only goes in one way. And I've pushed it in there, and now I've got to take it back out of there so that I can glue it. So we're going to do that, and I will be back after 14 of those bits. One sec. So we got all these little, come on, focus. All those little bits on top of the cylinders. I think they might be, it looks like they go around maybe a spark plug wire, and they might be there to direct airflow, potentially. Again, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> um, help me out here, Smalls. I'm struggling. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So all of those are on. <clears throat> just just take your time. They, they, they go in. They're a little bit of a tight fit on some of the cylinders, but otherwise they go in just fine. Stage 10. Ooh. Let's grab that. 
13. There's 10. Looks like some more uh, some more push rods here. Let's see what we got here. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. All right. Um, there we go. Let's see what we have here. Okay. And oh, they don't tape these shut. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. Another uh, another thing of what looks like push rods. You got one for the intake valve, one for the exhaust valve. A little brackety thing here. Some screws. And what is probably part of the, uh, one of the machine guns and or cannons, probably. Okay, so we got that there. Let's see what we're doing with them. Okay, so we need to take our intake manifolds, I believe. You know, don't don't get it twisted. If I'm wrong, just calmly correct me. We're going to flip her around this way. We've got the slot. We've got these holes. She's going to... She's nice. Nice, snug fit. Make sure she presses down on those little posts. There we go. Um, it's a dotted line, so don't glue. Do, 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 do. They give you tips on pushing it in. That, that's all we're doing for now for stage 10. Stage 11. Ooh. Okay. Oh, one of the most difficult stages of the engine. Oh, my God. Here we go. So we're going to slice this bag open. Seems to be a running gag on the channel here. Slice the bag open. Okay. Take out the electric motor. We're going to look at it. And that's it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're actually, this is not for a cannon. This is actually a motor mount. Um, so we're going we're gonna to take this motor and we're going to put it in, in this orientation. And we're going to get this fella mounted in here, like that. And then we got a sandwich on the top. Okay. Let's see here. I just want to... deliberately and we're gonna have to shove these little wires in so give me a second i'll be right back okay so you want to get those wires out of the way and then you want to sandwich this fella together there we go okay sandwich it together and then you could just gently push the wires in while squeezing it down and you're good to go. We're gonna get a couple of these little plastic screws in here. So that's a tiny bit on the tricky side. It all goes together. Just gotta pay attention to your wire routing. Uh, root, root, root for the home wire. There we go, okay. That one in, motor's aligned. Ooh. Okay. Pack two will test you, Wayne said. He was not wrong. This is a very detailed pack of bits with some very specific fitments. And you shouldn't have any gaps in your uh, clamshell there. And that plug should be nice and stable. And it is. And the motor seems to be well affixed into position. Ooh. Okay. And then we're going to take this fella and we're going to put it on in this orientation. We're going to get that little drive shaft into this little hole and she'll just kind of shove in there, press fit, and that's going to squeeze the back of this metal, uh, this black plastic motor mount around the motor. There we go. 
There's that. Okay, now we're gonna, now we're gonna take our octopus here out of its package. Come on. Okay. Whoo. Oh, these are all little, these are like little floppy, rubbery, hosey bits. Okay. And now we're going to take this part. All right. And holes up. So those two holes at the top. And then this fella is going to squeeze onto here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. I could see how this could be a bit trying. And we do want to glue those. I'm going to glue them from behind. I'm going to attack from the rear on this one. And I'm going to press this down and hit it with a hit it with a dab of kicker. And then we have this beast <laughs> and we've got to fish our wires like this. So we're going to try to like get them in between every other Oh my gosh. Okay, this is, yeah, this is going to take a little while. But that being said, once we have all those down, we're going to take this electric motor assembly and put it right. Yeah. Get her down in there. There we go. Wowzers. Okay. And a couple more little plastic screws. <clears throat> this is going to be a very long episode of the build, I think. We're going to get the two screws right into here. And I'm going to get the other screw in. I'll be right back. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to watch carefully. We're going to take this. And do you see that little boss right there? That's going to go this way. Okay. And then this is the half of the engine from stage, from, uh, stage 9. You want it in this orientation. So that screw is closer to that notch. That screw is more in the middle. And we're going to shove her, shove her in. Okay. And then there we go. Ooh, that was, that was like, uh, they're CAD drawings. So it's like, it's very computer, you know, design specific. And then we're going to take the other half of the engine. So we want this with these valve covers pointing backwards. We're going to take this and rotate it around. Oh, my crazy glue's touching my hand. It freaked me out. I thought it was like a bug or something. I'm scared of bugs. And then the screw that's more in the middle is going to go right here. So you can see that boss. And we're going to put her, mount that right onto there. And, uh, uh, positive click. That's what we want. We want those positive clicks, everybody. That's what we like. Okay. So we've got that fully inserted. And now for the fun part. We've got to route all these wires and plug them in to little holes all over the model kit. This is going to be insane. It's going to be, 
magnifiers and tweezers galore. We better we better zoom in for this a little more here. Focus. There we go. So you can see all those little holes. And these little these little plug wires have to go in to each one. Just like so. There we go. And there's whoop, there's that one installed. So we got to go around the whole motor and do that on the front and the back of these cylinders. So I'm assuming these are these are the spark plug wires. But uh, oh boy, that's going to be a little bit of work. Um, I think we're going to take a bathroom break and come back to this, and we will show you all the wires going in. I'll do the last couple on camera also, just so you can see how the ones go around the back. But, oh boy, super fun. Feels like the first two boxes of the build, which is one-sixth of your parts packs, is about a quarter of the work of the entire plane, I think. But this thing is awesome. So much detail. It's insanity. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> so the spark plug wires are all in. Uh, they're very intricate. There's a lot of them. And it's a little fiddly. Um, you just take your time, take a deep breath, crack a beer, I don't know, whatever you got to do. Whatever your coping mechanism is for doing tedious things. But the final results are more than worth it. This thing is gorgeous. Um, oh, man, I forgot where we are. Let's see. So now uh, step three after the spark plug wires are in. Something easier is we're going to take the rear cylinder push rods and we're going to put them on right yeah there we go and we're going to make sure that they snap into place and you want to make sure they align uh, sorry under all the cylinders properly and they're they're not like snapping into anything under the valve train here they're just the push rods, they just have to be in the right spot. And they're all in the right spot. And then, and then, no and then. And then we're going to flip the engine over. So we're at the front. We're going to have this bit. Oh, I got to zoom out just a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. So, by the way, I did CA glue all of those spark plug wires in. Um... Well, if you notice, some of these have a longer pin at the front of them, a little post. So we're going to take this bracket and we're going to layer right down on those. But first, our friend, Mr. CA Glue, a little, little dab on each post here. Okay. And we're going to take this bracket and we're going to, there we go, and there we go. And we're going to very, very gently press that on. And now that's good. Stage complete. Stage 12. Okay. Oh, that engine. Look at that thing. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot going on there. Stage 12. I have a headache from all the CA accelerator I've been spraying in here. Might be a good idea to have uh, some proper ventilation when you're doing all that. Oh boy. That is some smelly stuff. I don't like the CA accelerator. So now I was watching Wayne build this model um, on his channel, and he did some things ever so slightly differently. Triple A batteries, eh? Um, um, hopefully I have some of those down here. And now we've got do 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 connectors on the battery box. Okay, super glue tweezers. <laughs> Okay, parts 1201 
three and four will not be used in this stage. So we're basically just gonna take this thing, this ring, and we're gonna install her onto here. So we just gotta figure out which way this goes. So the tab down, and then it looks like she goes on like, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna just go on like that. So a little bit of super glue on all these holes. One, two, three, four, five. And then you really can't put this on the wrong way because there's two pins that are right next to each other that have to go in. And it doesn't take a whole lot of pressing to get this part in there. And then that part is in there and it's glued down and uh, stage complete. And then 13, so these are, these are little, these are the little exhausts right here. These little tailpipes. You know, they don't come out the tail of the plane. Let's get rid of some of this plastic that we don't need. There we go. And goodbye. And 13. That looks like, nope, that's 14. My God, there's a lot of parts. There's a lot of parts. Pack two is insanity. So many parts. They're nice little parts though, but a lot of them. And, and, come on, there we go. All right, now there was something Wayne mentioned about, I think potentially putting in the exhausts before the intake manifold. Let me just take a look at these parts here. But uh, we gotta put some little flappy things on here. Um, little, uh, little flaps that go around the exhaust pipes, we're going we're gonna to get those on in a sec. But just, just I'll be right back. I want to read a little more on the instructions. All right, I don't need to worry about the exhaust and intake stuff right now. i got to put these little um, exhaust flaps um, onto the back of the engine cowling area. And they have uh, letters on them. So this is E. E goes there. D goes there. C goes here. Now I'm assembling them like this because it's the only way to really keep them uh, like stable. And this one's marked B on the back. So B, C, D, E. And you got a fifth one in here. That's marked A. That's not used just yet. And then we're going to take this little brackety thing here. Okay, and we're going to place that down over all the hinges. And then we're gonna take a few of these little screws and put them in. Right there, right there, well, right, uh, right there, right there, and right there. And you get four, you only need three. Put one back in the bag. Those are tiny little screws. We'll get those in and we'll be right back. Okay, so those are all in, and I folded them down, or back, and A, that just gets glued down right there. So there we go. That's looking nice. And that's it for stage 13. Stage 14 is going to be the other side of this, and there's some more exhaust pipes, and we're going to keep them all in their packages until we go to use these exhaust pipes, because there's a lot of them, <laughs> and we don't want to get confused at it. So, and you know, I can get a little confused down here sometimes, especially when I don't have like a My Part Works page to look at um, on how to build it, because uh, Todd has not built one of these. So, the same thing. Um, well, these are numbered. <laughs> so that one clearly goes there. And then we're going to do... One, do these go in a different way? Oh, they do, okay, yeah. 
I forgot about that. Um, so we got that glued on, so let's see here. We lay that one down. And nope, I got that backwards. Jeez, Ian, you can't even just pay attention to the instructions. Don't listen to me. And then two goes here. Make sure they stay in their little their grooves. There's number three. And it's a little more difficult because this part's sitting cattywampus now. And then four. Okay. And they're all in their grooves. And we're going to take this part. And we're going to layer down. Like so. This one's a little trickier. Because the part's not laying perfectly flat anymore. But there we go. Okay. We got that in. And we need three more of these little screws. I'll just leave two in that bag. I'll use the leftover one from the last issue. We're using our tinier uh, PH0 uh, screwdriver for this. And I know I didn't dip it into the oil. These seem to thread in really nicely before. And once we get the middle one in, you're sort of you're sort of good to go. I mean, if you want to give a little dip of oil, give a little dip of oil. I recommend it whenever going in the metal, which is what you're doing right now. And these are some microscopic little screws. I mean, I've had smaller, but not much. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead. We're going to fold all these guys up. And then we've got to glue in this one right here. So we're just going to put a little dab of CA right there smear a little here and i'm going to smear a tiny bit on there and we'll get that in and really you just want to kind of line it up line it up with that flap right there there we go and then don't breathe don't breathe anywhere near it put that down and let that ca glue set up Oh boy, this engine is a lot of work. Jeez, Wayne. I was just like, well, you know, he said, ah, he's just trying to intimidate me. You no, know, no, no. It's a lot of work. It's it's so cool though. Let's see. So then they want us to put in the intake manifold, and then they want us to fish in the exhaust manifolds. So I'm gonna experiment with that a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay. So the back of the motor now. We're going to glue this on. Now, this has a few attachment points. This little peg here, this little peg here, and that little peg there, and this little peg right here. They're kind of hard to see, but what you want to do is you want to get a dab of CA glue on all those pegs. Okay. Right like that. And then it's, it's a little, little bit fiddly. There's that one there. Good. Nope. Nope. Get this one on the front. And then... There we go. That one's in. And that one's, it didn't click, but it looks like it's in. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of glue in this model. A lot of little bits you got to glue together. So you got to.
and there's a little extra paint sometimes on some of these parts because you know they're painted by robots and stuff and uh there we go okay so now that's glued on that's starting to look cool we're gonna let that dry and then we're supposed to snake this sucker into the motor and it wants us to snake it in so there's all these little exhaust ports or intake ports in this case right here and you got to line them up with all the cylinders and get them get them wiggled into place so you got to like one at a time you got to wiggle them wiggle them in there little by little they will go in um, and then it wants you to snake exhausts through here. And I think what Wayne said was he went about putting in the exhausts first and then following up with the intakes. Um, I'm going to take a look at that and experiment. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> this actually took me a couple tries to figure out. So basically... Uh, it's just uh, it's just a fiddly part. So once you have this cowling, the rear of the cowling on here, you walk this guy down, and you really actually have to like the shorter intake runners. You have to kind of snap them under some of these areas here, and then you walk around it. Okay, hold on a second here. I don't know if this went into detail on anyone else's videos, but you like walk around, and if these long intake runners don't snap into the top of the cylinders you just 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 manipulate them with the tweezers a little bit and they'll they'll pop in it helps to put your two screws in here and snug them just a little it keeps everything from like falling out if you uh if you say f it and you know just storm off to get another drink uh it it is fiddly that that is a, a pretty tricky part of the build now that it's done i'm like well that was easy yeah the third tries the term charm um, it was it was a bit of a tricky spot because no plastic part is ever not a little bit warped. Oh man, that thing looks so cool. Uh, so okay, those are in. Now we've got to start fishing in our exhaust pipes, and we've got stages eleven, twelve, and thirteen parts, or eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Maybe yeah, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. I think. 13, 14, 14, 13, 12, thir 12, 13, 14. There we go. That's where these are from. I have to remember. Um, and uh, yeah, they look uh, like they might be a little fiddly as well, but we're going to figure it out and we'll get these things put into place. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, we're a good chunk of the way getting through these exhaust pipes on. Come on. I got too much other stuff in the background that's focusing on that. Now, you see these pins around the perimeter here? Get the pipe sort of down kind of where it needs to go. Get it on this pin first, and then from the side, walk the pipe into the cylinder head with tweezers or a flathead screwdriver or something. And they sort of, they're, you got to flex and push and a little bit of pushing and pulling and tugging, and they snap in. They do. I haven't put any glue on any of these yet at all because I'm too scared. I don't know. But I've only got a few more exhaust pipes to go like one, two, three, four. And I got one, two, three, four right here. And then we'll be done. But uh, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it's fiddly, but it's its not as hard as, uh, as you would be led to believe, um, potentially. So, okay, well, I'm going to get back to snapping in my my exhaust pipes, and I'll be right back. As they say, hell or high water, we've got our exhausts in. It was a bit fiddly. I'll be honest with you, I did have to use some critical thinking skills and going, well, that's just not going to bend that way. And that's just, a t it's, I don't, it just seems like something wasn't going to, so what I did is those little pegs that you have, sorry, come on, focus, those little pegs that you have sticking out of here, okay? Some of them I trimmed down by about 50%. They're still there. They still have purchase on the pipes. Um, most of them, none of these I trimmed down. I don't think any of those or any of those. It, it was when I got over here. I actually, I actually trimmed a couple of them down. Um, 
This one I ended up just breaking by accident, the little peg off this silver ring here. But not, not, not the hugest of deals. But uh, these other ones here, I just, I just trimmed them down like halfway, half the peg. And then everything went in. And look at this. Come on, focus, you son of a... Hold on. I got to zoom out. It does better if I zoom out and then I bring it up to the camera. That works better. Look at that basket of madness that is a 14-cylinder radial engine from Japan. That thing is crazy. So, okay. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, the fortitude. It does require some fortitude. It's totally doable, and it's definitely freaking worth it. Now, I need... Um, oh, oh. So now, we get to pop on our engine cowling. I guess for fun, for poops and giggles, we will put it on. So, um, I think this is the bottom. Of, yes, that's the bottom of the engine. And this will be the top, because we got to have room for our 7.7 .7 machine guns. So, this will go on the bottom. And then, this will go on the top. It's secured in there well enough. We drop our little, close all our little exhaust flaps and hold on to the back of that. And then we're going to put our little, oh, oh, baby. Oh, it's so cool. And you can still, you know, take off your engine cowling and admire the madness underneath there. Wow, those Japanese. I mean... Look, there's, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven actual exhaust tips coming out of here, but 14 cylinders. Some of these are doubles. So some of these have like two legs on them. They, they, they take care of two cylinders. Exhaust. I don't know how they balance the... Ex there's no balancing of exhaust pulses on this motor. This thing's a straight through. This is straight piped out of every cylinder. And then a, a few of the cylinders, they have to share a pipe. I mean... It's probably what gave the Zero that very distinctive exhaust noise that, like, really struck terror into the hearts of our troops at the beginning of the war. Um, that noise is so distinct. It's like the burble out of a Subaru WRX. No car sounds like that. No car sounds like that. You could have a turbo anything. It doesn't quite sound like the Subaru Boxer. And oddly enough, there is a link between Subaru... And, uh, and Fuji Heavy Industries, who was Nakajima Aircraft Company, that built this engine. So, just like a Subaru, this engine has an extremely unique exhaust note. And I am going to go upstairs and go raid the battery daddy for some triple A's. And we're going to plug this sucker in, and you're going to see this propeller sprint spin tonight. I'll be right back. Okay, we've, we've visited battery daddy and begged him for our allowance and triple A batteries. And he has delivered contact. I feel the breeze. They're, they're, I mean, they're real propellers. They're just too small to make the thing fly for its weight, but I feel the breeze. That's so cool. Here, look, here, here's a little, here's a little Ziploc bag. Okay. Hold on. That wasn't a good, the Ziploc bag was, uh, And it like spins up slowly up to full, full RPM like a real propeller. It's pretty quiet too. That is awesome. Okay. There's our little battery test box. This is all we're going to use this for, I think, is just testing circuits and stuff. That is absolutely badass. We've got a freaking... 14-cylinder radial, Nakajima Sake 21, radial engine. Oh! Okay, all right. All the, all the, uh, all, all the kvetching I've been doing while I was trying to fish spark plug wires through and an intake manifold ports and exhausts and, oh, my gosh. 
so many parts and so fiddly and so freaking worth it. Okay, stage complete. Um, there we go. Hold on. Where's my, where's my mouse? There we go. Okay, we're scrolling through the instructions and we've got stage 15, which uh, this is basically, it looks like the supercharger assembly at the back of the, uh, uh, of the engine. Um, the, the Nakajima had a, a gear driven supercharger. Uh, it did have like a, 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 a float bowl carburetor or something. I think it would get starved for fuel at certain extreme maneuvers. But uh, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go through the instructions. And uh, bingo, bango. We're going we're gonna to take a look at uh, finishing this thing up. Let's see here. Okay. All right, pretty basic stuff. We just got to snap some of these. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. There we go. Snap some of these supercharger parts together. Um, there we go. Yes, this thing goes, this thing goes on here. Oh, it wants us to glue these together. Give me a second. I'm going to glue a couple bits together. We'll be right back. Okay. And that's it. The supercharger went together a treat. Um, it was no special instruction required. I just glued everything together real quick. Um, I did, however, um, leave the, um, the intake. Well, I did crazy glue the intake on. I don't know. It looked like at some point on Wayne's video, he had to pull something off of here. But that's the, the gear-driven supercharger off the back of the motor. And that's going to click right into there. And that's the headphone jack that connects to that to power the thing. And there we go. Bob's your uncle. And she connects, and I've tested it, and it powers on, and it's beautiful. And there we go. Oh, my precious. This was a very cool and very fiddly pack of the model. But it's the first time I've ever built an 18th scale 14-cylinder radial motor from World War II. Radial engine. Engine. Um, so given that fact and the complexity of designing a model kit that can be like screwed and glued together to do this, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was an amount of work. You know, I've been down here, I mean, out of the five hours I've been down here, I've probably done a solid two and two and a half hours of work for pack two, maybe three hours. Now, I goof off a lot. I go, I go to the bathroom, and then I go get a beer, and then, you know, I chat on Discord with the guys a little bit in between. Probably a little, a little over two hours of work to get this thing done. And uh, you just got to be willing to uh, break out the tweezers and, and tweak and pull and prod on things just a little bit, and it'll all go together. So, uh, konnichiwa, you sons of flowers. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, again, uh, links in the description below to Agora. Like, subscribe, comment. I got piles of stickers. Email me. And uh, either way, we'll see you next time on Pit Stain Hobbies. Thanks, everyone. Adios.